very good morning friends so i hope you're all safe and healthy well i started off uh, in the last video a series on the ecl model that is the expected credit loss model which is given in indias 109 i also told you that we're going to cover a three step procedure in terms of the impairment testing for the financial assets well i think before we go on to the concept of the ecl testing before we get on to the three step model the first thing which i said was you know looking at what approach would apply to a given financial asset i also gave you that there are three approaches one is called a general approach one is called the simplified approach and one is the poci but i think before we zero down on you know which approach is going to apply to which financial asset i think the very first exercise is looking into you know which financial assets will get covered under impairment testing not all financial assets to which indus 109 applies will be tested for impairment because in certain financial assets you'll see that there is automatically an inbuilt impairment testing so what i'm going to do in this particular video i'm going to share you a list of all the financial assets and we'll zero down you know whether impairment testing under the ecl model will apply to these assets or not let's find this out in detail sunday ke sunday 12 baje ek pura ka pura competition hota hai scholarship pool ka jiske andar 1 crore ka ji ha aapne theek suna 1 crore ka scholarship pool hai इस संडे 12 बजे आप जो बच्चे इंटर की तैयारी कर रहे हैं वो इस कंपटीशन के अंदर पार्ट ले सकते हैं करना कुछ नहीं है आपने केवल अन एकेडमी की ऐप डाउनलोड करनी है और आप लाइव टेस्ट ले सकते हैं डाउनलोड करके ऐप आप टेस्ट को अनलॉक कर सकते हैं मेरा कोड इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं CAKB10 इसके अंदर आपको 60 मिनट्स एक घंटे में 40 क्वेश्चंस आंसर करने हैं और इस 1 करोड़ के पूल में से डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द रैंक्स आपको इस पर प्लस सब्सक्रिप्शंस की एक साल की सब्सक्रिप्शंस फ्री मिलेंगी तो आइए इस लेफ्ट लाइव टेस्ट को लीजिए और इसके अंदर खूब सारे इनाम जीतिए सो लेट्स क्रैक इट Well, as you can see, there is a list of almost 13 items which I have taken to which the ECL model is being evaluated whether it is applicable or not. But you don't need to remember any list, you know, it is pretty logical in nature. You know, like for example, if you focus in terms of the point number one, you can say we are talking in terms of financial assets debt, which is measured at EC. Well, if you look at the financial asset in terms of equity instruments, we don't measure the financial assets equity at amortized cost. It is only the financial assets debt which is measured at AC. So would impairment testing apply to them? Yes, because we don't consider any fair value concept in terms of measurement of the financial asset debt. Except that at the initial recognition, we do consider the fair value, but subsequently we only apply the concept of effective interest rate. Look at the point number two. When a financial asset debt is measured at OCI, of course, we consider the fair value changes and they are taken in the other comprehensive income. But the impairment loss is supposed to be taken to the PL. So even if you're measuring them at a fair value through OCI, but still the fair value changes, including the impairment loss is getting parked in the other comprehensive income. So there is a need to, you know, take that amount from the other comprehensive income and bring it to the profit and loss account. So impairment testing would become applicable to the financial assets debt measured at OCI. But if it is a financial asset debt, what you see in point number three is measured at FPTPL. Now that is already at a fair value and the changes in the fair value is also being taken to the PL. So naturally, impairment testing would not apply. So we can say if you look at an FA debt, the FA debt could be measured at AC, it could be measured at FPT OCI or it could be measured at an FPTPL. Now, if it is measured at FPT, OCI or at AC, 
then impairment testing applies. But if it is measured at FPTPL, then impairment testing is not applicable. Interestingly, if you see in terms of financial asset equity, like the point number four and five. Now, when it is a financial asset equity, irrespective, you know, whether it is measured at a fair value through OCI or through PNL, we don't apply impairment testing. The logic is fairly simple. Now, you would say, why? In terms of debt, when it is OCI, you are applying impairment testing. But in terms of equity, you are saying no impairment testing. The reason is simple. In terms of OCI, that is for a debt, there is a recycling concept. But in terms of equity, there is no recycling. So now, if you apply an impairment testing to a financial asset equity, which is measured at OCI, you would be pushing an amount from the OCI to the profit and loss account and which will violate the principle that there is no recycling. So the parameters are simple. When you've got a financial asset which is equity investments, it is totally outside the purview of ECL model. And if it is a debt investments, then only when it is measured at AC or OCI, then the ECL model applies, not if it is measured at FPTPL. So this takes care of the first five items and if it is a financial asset, whether it's a debt or whether it's an equity, you know, which is measured at FPTPL, then also the ECL model does not apply. So we can easily zero down that if the measurement is AC, it applies. If it is FPTPL, it doesn't apply. If it is OCI, depends. Whether it is equity, then no. If it is debt, then yes. Isn't that simple? You don't need to actually, you know, cram anything. You can just apply your logics. Now, there are a couple of other assets also, financial assets, which are covered under the purview of the ECL model. And we're looking at the item number seven, eight and nine. Now, whether it is a trade receivable, whether it is a lease receivable, a lease receivable would arise on India's 116. Uh, trade receivables would arise on India's 115. And even the contract assets would arise on account of 115. So ECL model is applicable to these assets, trade receivables, contract assets, as well as lease receivable. And then I would say I'm looking in terms of the loan commitments as well as the financial guarantee contracts. Now, if you look at the point number 10, 11, 12, you can see in terms of point number 10, 11, 10 is the loan commitments at FPTPL. The moment it is FPTPL, it doesn't apply. And the moment it is not at FPTPL, then ECL applies. Same goes with the concept of financial guarantee contracts. If they measured at FPTPL, then it does not apply. And if it is not measured at FPTPL, then it applies. Though in the examination, you know, conditions, you would generally see questions coming in, you know, majorly out of the first six categories. Well, I don't say that you cannot get a question on the other categories, but mainly what you see in the examinations, you'll see the six category. So the concept is very simple. You just need to focus on that whether it is measured at AC, apply ECL. OCI depends. Equity, no. Debt, yes. The logic is the recycling, the no recycling. And if it is measured at FPTPL, the answer is no, because the fair value changes in any case is being taken to the FPTPL. And let me also tell you that when you are considering the investments in subsidiary associates and joint ventures, which are investments, those investments, if they are measured at cost, the impairment testing is done, but that's covered under index 36. And if those equity investments are measured at a fair value, which generally would be a fair value through OCI, that again is no recycling. So impairment testing would not apply. Isn't that interesting? Wait for something more to come on this ECL model where we're going to now discuss in the next video that which assets we're going to apply, which particular approach, the journal, or we're going to apply the simplified approach. Of course, we're not going to talk in terms of the POCI. Thank you. Take care and bye-bye.